arrived at what we call the 3 plus 5 formula. The 8 items which appear horizontally are, I'm going to just mention the headline because I'll be using examples to illustrate it. So first one and an overpowering one is people relations. It is unbelievable that in many companies, the HR function is the least celebrated uh, function. But it comes right on top of what the shaper's agenda is. Uh, is people relations refers to relations not only with employees increasing their engagement but also relates to vendors suppliers and others the kind of bonhomie that for example uh, rotary tries to create companies have decreasing levels of engagement of employees this is all published data and i think people relations serves as the first item which appears in the horizontal the second item that comes in the horizontal is short-term versus long-term focus. Very often I hear, especially young people, argue that there is so much to do with technology having advanced as it has. There is so much to do that we don't have time to think about the long-term. We are all struggling to find time to deal with the short-term. But shapers are distinctive in so far as they are able to deal with both. The best example I can take of a person who without any training, has successfully combined short-term and long-term focus is a mother. A mother is attending to a crying baby, to the nappies and all that stuff. At the same time, she doesn't stop dreaming about whether her daughter will become a painter or a poet or an engineer. And mothers are the greatest example we have where in a natural way, a person is able to consider the short-term and the long-term. However harried she might be, with the short term. So we've got people relations, we've got short and long term focus. The third item we have is critical thinking. Critical thinking is the ability of a person not to deal with the obvious alternative, but to think of out of the box alternatives. I mean, a very good example of this is what happened in the Maharashtra elections when the MVA came into power. If you see how Sharad Pawar behaved, uh, he showed the mindset of a politician, uh, mindset, behavior and action. Every time people thought they had figured out that you could do option A or B, Sharad Pawar came out with an option C or D and kept everybody guessing. Shapers are very good at critical thinking of creating alternatives. For example, Kiran Mazumdar Shaw, who set up Biocon, was solidly entrenched with something called solid state fermentation. But solid state fermentation would keep her in a, an industry which is small and she'd be a big fish in a small pond. And Kiran asked herself, what is it that I need to do to have a better quality of fermentation technology so that I could enter a much bigger pond? And she actually sold her solid state fermentation business, which very few people do. They call it core business and they hang on to it and went into what is called biopharma or large molecules and has developed molecules which uh, are entered the US market now have been approved. So that's an example. I'm going to just mention the other five because I'm going to spend all my time, whatever available time I have only on the three because every shaper we interview, Anil Nayak in Larson and Tubro, Mr. F.C. Kohli and Ramadurai in TCS, Mr. Uh, Ms. Kiran Mazumdar Shaw in Biocon, and we are now doing three more, which is Deepak Parekh in HDFC, we are doing uh, Harsh Mariwala in Mariko and we are doing uh, uh, Harsh Mariwala and Uday Kotak in Kotak Bank. So that will make a set of six. All of them, without using the jargon, came up with people relations, short and long term focus and critical thinking. The other five, just for the record, are orbit shifting thinking. Next one, breaking barriers. Next one, Manipulating the levers of change. Last one, second last one, cyclical learning. And the last one is having a stakeholder view rather than a shareholder view. I'm not going to spend time in the limited uh, window available today. But I'm going to focus on the first three. Because the first three we consider through our research as being essential. People relations, short and long term focus and critical thinking. The other five is like a golfer. He definitely needs a driver, he needs a putter, and he needs a, a 
seven iron, but the other others are all sort of variable. He can use it, he may not use it. We validated this because I went to speak to three or four captains of industry. I myself have significant experience with uh, corporations and corporations. And we validated this in a preliminary way and then undertook, I don't know how many hours of interviews. It must be over a hundred hours of interviews between my co-author and myself with the shaper and the people surrounding the shaper in order to write these books. Now let me take an example of each of these three companies very briefly. Tata Consultancy Service is a startup. I mean, it started in 1968. It's, it's, it's in our times. If I look at the age group of many of the people whose faces I can see on the screen, it's happened under our nose, as it were. And then uh, it was started in a country which had no electricity, no infrastructure. All of us can, those of us who are old enough can remember how life was in 1968. And Fakir Chandkuli, God bless his soul, he turned 96 last week. The, he's the effective founder of TCS. And he brought in the, he brought in the shapers expertise, but he also saw the gaps in the market. In a milieu where even the public sector, like LIC, could not import a computer. They could not even open the box because the unions refused to let them touch the boxes. Uh, TCS pivoted by saying you will get customers from outside India. In 1968, given where India's infrastructure was, I think it was a very critical sort of thinking uh, exercise. And then uh, 1996, 18 years later, when he handed over to Ramadurai, Ramadurai was faced with this uh, uh, tremendous challenge of what was called Y2K. And all of us have lived through that as well. And uh, he automated software development. And I'm using these as examples. But all the while, while these unknown viruses, if I might call it that, India's infrastructure was an unknown virus, which a computer industry had to deal with. Mr. Ramadurai had to deal with the unknown virus called Y2K and we are all dealing with an unknown coronavirus now. Uh, you found alternatives to get over this and manage the show. And TCS, which had an IPO at $2 billion in 2003, is today $100, $110 billion. And we consider TCS to be uh, an outstanding example of shaping an institution and it's happened in the last... 30, 40 years. Incidentally, all the companies we chose are companies that have shaped their institution in the last 40, 50 years. We did not choose Godrej or Tata Sons because these are all 100, 120 years old. Bajaj, Birla, wonderful institutions. But we did not choose them because we wanted to choose things that have happened during our sort of lifetime. And the, the people relations aspects of TCS within employment of half a million, half a million people work in TCS. More people resign from TCS every month than join a company during its entire lifetime. So it has a huge rate of uh, change, but yet they've kept the people touch exceptionally well. Uh, the short and long term aspect is also illustrated through the Y2K attention uh, as an example. So I want to talk a little bit about Biocon now, just a few words. The Biocon is very interesting because it's a woman entrepreneur. It's happened right under our nose, uh, 1988 or something she began. And you know, uh, Biocon started, she's a daughter of a person who was in the brewing industry. So you need enzymes to brew beer and so on. And what, uh, she went to Australia to study uh, biological sciences came back and she wanted to be a brewer and in a male dominated industry where uh, brewing is kept for men there is no way she was going to be admitted just by coincidence and with people connected with you she had an Australian classmate who suggested her name to be an entrepreneur he probably thought this is a Gujarati name and therefore she must be an entrepreneur and an Irishman rang her up the Irishman had a company, Biocon, in Ireland. And he said, I want to have a business partner in India to enter a fermentation business. That's how it began. And Kiran has uh, broken many uh, barriers that women face in, uh, in uh, shaping an institution. She set up her company. 
and has created a company which is now worth $6 billion. So that's a very remarkable example. And when we talk to Kiran, the amount of emphasis she put on critical thinking, I gave the example earlier of how she actually departed from her core business. Many of us in our companies have great difficulty with departing from our core business. I can't help thinking about Tata. Tata started as a textile company. Somewhere down the line, they became an insurance and bank company. Somewhere down the line, they entered steel and hydroelectric power. And now they are thought of as a software, a dominated by software. So this ability to give up the past and move on is something that uh, uh, shapers show very well. And uh, we have described in more detail in each of the books uh, what has happened in that company and illustrated how this uh, mindset, behavior and action of uh, a shaper plays out in the actual running of a company. Finally, we've got Larson and Tubro, uh, a very, very well-known company. The company itself was born in 1939 or thereabouts by two Danish engineers. They are so well-known. I mean, they're making India virtually. So we know Larson and Tubro very well. But frankly, between 1939 and say 1989, Larson and Tubro was an engineering projects company uh, doing all sorts of things which common people did not understand until Anil Nayak came and took over as the managing director. Now for Anil Nayak, he breathes uh, not oxygen but Larson and Tubro <laughs> and he, he, he doesn't exhale it. It's 24 by 7 for him. And in 20 years, between 1989 and uh, till he retired, 1999, sorry, and till he retired two, three years ago, he's still the chairman. Uh, he converted Larson and Dubro from being a 5,000 crore valued company to 250,000 crores. So that's quite a remarkable sort of change. And he did two things which I would like to mention. There are many other things mentioned in the books, which is uh, one is called Operation Blue Chip. He actually sat down being an engineer. He said, how do stock markets value our company? Why does a soap company get such a high valuation? And why doesn't my company get that valuation? He actually used consultants and challenged his top leadership team to sit and disaggregate. And he believes he found uh, what are the levers that he can operate in order to get its valuation improved. And of course, uh, today it's uh, worth a lot more, though it is still less than the soap company. But nonetheless, I think he cracked this uh, black box called uh, uh, valuation by mounting a project called Blue Chip. Likewise, his emphasis on people, uh, Anil Nayak told us in our interview that he personally sits with young people who are up and coming, 30 years old, 35 years old. There are video cameras placed in the room and he poses them business questions to which they give replies. And then the video cameras are played back to them. It's almost like training a, a coaching a cricketer or a footballer as to what was it that they said, how they said it, which was not so good and how they could self-improve. Uh, Anil Nayak said he spent about 35% of his time on people. This doesn't mean the HR department. It means thinking about people. And it is similar sort of percentages you got from Ramadurai and Kiran. It could vary from 25 to 45, but 35 is a good midpoint. So we were very excited when we did this. And then it's taken a lot of effort to write these books. And I really think India needs more institutions. And we are not thinking enough about it. Those of us who work in companies are working the company. We're trying to make it a better company and making our contributions. But if you can focus on people relations, critical thinking, short and long term simultaneously. We will do so much more for our companies to create institutions. I took these six companies that we have studied and found that their market capitalization accounts for 30% of the Bombay Stock Exchange. And I'm leaving out Godrej and Bajaj and Tata's and others. You know, these are just these. Imagine what would happen if we could convert many more companies to be institutions by following some of the principles that we have outlined, some of which you may find fault with, but you will find other reasons to uh, create an institution. India needs, that's why our stock market is so narrow, because there are very few institutions. 
uh, I'm not using the word institution in the stock market, uh, financial institution, but operating institutions. And we re really need uh, uh, our stock market participation to expand enormously with great institutions. I wish we could create another 20 institutions during uh, the current season. The current season meaning not the COVID season, but uh, within our lifetime, so that India needs these institutions. So this is the essence of so what we have researched and found. I could go on and you've written three books and spent all of your time on it. You can imagine the uh, propensity to keep speaking about it. But perhaps uh, as requested by Farhad, for, uh, leave some 10 minutes or 15 minutes after but the president allows for questions that anybody would like to ask and which I can clarify. The details, of course, are all in the books. Thank you about uh, on uh, uh, furlough, not furlough, sorry, for uh, on, on uh, lockdown. Thank, thank, thank you, Mr. Gopal Krishnan. Uh, yeah, so th thank you, Mr. Gopal Krishnan. Uh, that was a really wonderful talk. Uh, Mudit, yeah, Mudit would like yes. to have the first question. Yes. Thank you. Super Gopal. My question is, we all know that what should be done, but very few of us get to do it. Is it because of the leadership at the top not allowing us or because we are weak ourselves in not executing it? Your comments, please. The latter. Okay. You know, shapers Got have it. enormous obstacles, but they believe in themselves. They believe in their people and they overcome those obstacles. And these books bring out that point very well. Okay. But when we become prisoners of our own mind, we want to pass the buck to somebody else uh, and we don't shape anything. Thank you. Uh, may, may, may I ask one question, uh, uh, Mr. Gopakrishnan, do you find this phenomenon uh, uh, more particular with reference to India as compared to the rest of the world, that there is a little uh, more of a uh, disability or inability to, uh, to, to shape? No, I don't think it's a disability. What happens, you see, India is a hugely entrepreneurial society. I mean, you must give marks to India that we've had a long tradition of entrepreneurship. But we have been used to creating trading. We've still got a trading mentality. So we create little businesses and make them bigger and then the family divides it, etc., etc. We are not, our mind is not yet tuned. If you see what is being taught in our MBA programs, assuming that that's a marker, well, very often it is being taught the functional aspects of business and management marketing, supply chain, IT, finance, etc. But this goes beyond that. This goes into critical thinking, people relation. I think our whole pedagogical system and our whole mindset has to change. And probably with a, with humility, we are trying to do our first step in that. Well, that's wonderful. Uh, yeah, Mr. Mitra, please unmute yourself for the question. SK, you need to, yes, SK, but you need to unmute yourself. Yeah, okay. Okay, my question is, uh, Gopal, this is a great talk. You are always a great uh, 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 in everything that you do. Thank you for addressing us. My question is, when you have uh, identified great companies and great shapers, what do you think of the innovation in the business? We are, we are Entrepreneur, but not innovation. And even PCS is a service company; they are not producing much products. So, are you becoming innovators? Even the two finance companies that we mentioned, Uday and Deeper, we are again not innovators of products like in the New York or London market. There. So, innovation. What is the point, and how do you bring in innovation that we have our products for the rest of the world? You know, we we all have different views. Uh, Views. Let me repeat your question to make sure I'm answering the right question. You're saying that you have identified companies, but we are not doing anything. We are not. Uh, um, we are not uh, impacting the world with uh, innovative products from India. Is this your question? These great companies, great shapers, they are doing standard business, but not sort of innovation, including PCS. Well, you know, uh, this is a phase. It's like saying. Uh, you know, this child you're saying is a very promising cricketer. Uh, 
He is three years old, but he has not hit any double century so far. My view is that if you go on the path that we are, remember, he has a 30-year-old capitalist economy. I mean, from 1940.